Hey, I'm Annie Martin, the owner of Mountain Moss Enterprises in Brevard, North Carolina. But most folks just call me Moss and Annie. Mosses, or bryophytes as they're termed in scientific language, are the oldest living land plants. They predate all other vascular plants on this planet by 50 million years. They're survivors. They have lived through all types of cataclysmic disasters and they continue to offer opportunities for wisdom to us. And mosses are beyond just a great horticultural choice and good for the environment. They're really good for your spirit. So this is Dicranum scoparium, and over here on my other side is Thuidium delicatulum. And this is Clymacium americanum. With Clymacium, it's really easy to see that this is an individual plant. Out of this colony of hundreds, I don't know, maybe a thousand, this is your entire Thuidium plant. And of course, it's a sideways grower. So you're not looking at the leaves here. If you had a loop for a microscope, you would be able to see there are little teeny tiny leaves on these branches. So these are your whole plant. And in terms of dicranum, there it is. So that's a trio of three different moss species. And you can see this one has windswept leaves. This one has branches with the leaves coming off of it. And this thuidium has these very delicate leaves. When I first started as a moss gardener, I did what most people do, and that's to observe how mosses are growing in nature. But as I became more astute in my observations and I started planting them in my own landscape, I realized that some of the references didn't give the full range or capabilities that certain moss species have. Some are quite versatile and can live in the shade or the sun, and others prefer only shade. There's even direct sun lovers. So that was something that I found fascinating as I started my moss journey. So eventually, as I continued to learn and develop my own expertise, I decided to share that through my book, The Magical World of Moss Gardening. You can learn a lot about moss gardening through my website, mountainmoss.com, and of course through my book. But there are some unique botanical features. One is that mosses do not have flowers or seeds. Instead, they have these sporophytes. And sporophytes are a second stage of reproduction um, that results in spores maturing and being distributed into the wind and making new colonies. But mosses can also grow a couple of other ways, and that's where it becomes really fascinating as a gardener. Because certain species are particularly good at growing from vegetative reproductive processes, which you could equate more to like a sedum or something that grows from itself. Dicranum is a mound species, and so it grows upright, and the sporophyte comes out of the top of the plant. Uh, not much underneath there is there. Mosses do not have roots. They only have rhizoids. Hint, and rhizoids only serve to hold them. Now over here on this thuidium, you'll see that I'm going to have to pull it apart because it's like a carpet. It's interwoven, each individual plant composing a colony. But once again, you look underneath and the rhizoids really just help hold it to whatever it's growing on. Now, thuidium can grow on just about anything, and it's also been found on decaying logs, but it also grows on soil and it grows on live trees, and uh, occasionally it'll grow on concrete or rocks, depending mm -hmm. on the microclimate conditions. But what's most important for gardeners is that if you expect sideways growth and expansion, then you need to plant sideways growers. The other most important factor is to determine what the microclimate is, and in particular, the sun exposure. And with these two particular species I've brought here to show you today, 
They like the shade better than the sun. Now, Clamacia, my very favorite moss species, grows differently from these two, and it also is more versatile in that it can live in shade or sun. Dicranum is an emerald green, and right up here in the corner, you can see a little bit of Thuidium, which is the same species as over here. And they live compatibly together. Thuidium may even shift to a golden color in the spring. Within just the Climacium, you can see brand new growth is intensely green, whereas older growth gets bigger and it also gets more olive colored and drab. Uh, as a licensed landscape contractor, I do offer site consultations, phone consultations for people that live too far away and for those that really want a magical moss retreat, I create moss gardens. My website is mountainmoss.com and I've got a YouTube channel and I've got a great Facebook group called Go Green with Moss. We've got about 4,500 members now. So please follow Moss and Annie on all the social media and I hope you'll like my YouTube channel and I hope you will support Trees Atlanta in their efforts to green the public spaces here in the city.